Uh, first, I want to talk about uh, Give to the Max. That's going to be on November 13th for everybody out there. In uh, PTZ land, we need your support. We need that support. Um, we also have a contest for Cozy Cups going on. Guess the weight of the bears. Ted, Lucky, Honey, and Holly, we get to guess their weight. Ain't that cool? Um, and who'll dare, who will den wear is uh, one of the things we're going to be doing, too. Um, I also want to thank all of our viewers and PTZ moderators out there for uh, bringing this live broadcast because it's pretty exciting for me on our guests that we're going to have. All the volunteers that are out there also, thank you uh, for doing a great job. And thanks, uh, as Lynn would say, for all you do. And i got to go by my mentor. So my guest today, Dr. Lynn Rogers. Come on out here, Dr. Lynn Rogers. This is exciting for me, exciting for the crew that's out here. Um, i got to tell you something. I've been friends of Lynn's for a lot of years, and I just got to say something. I'm excited to have this guy on. Thank you so much for coming. I've got some questions for you. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. And how are you going to handle those, huh? I hope they're easy ones. Well, you know, they, they should be. Uh, you know those PTZ folks out there, and I'm going to take and get this clip off if that's okay. Um, I don't want to get too loud here, so I'm going to clip this on here, okay? i got to tell you something. Uh, I hope everybody out there can hear us. Um, Lynn, Dr. Lynn Rogers um, is about to get asked some questions. And I'm going to tell who sent these questions out. And uh, he's checking his phone right now. He loves that phone. <laughs> I'm telling you to shut off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. He's shutting his phone off, in other words, right? Yeah. Is that what you're doing? i got to tell you, what a beautiful day today, finally, huh? Yeah, it's on the way here. The sun came out. Yeah. The yellow leaves, brilliant, beautiful. Wow, and we notice uh, all the time that he's always aware of what's around him as far as nature goes. Anything good you've seen today for nature? been at his desk all day working hard as usual. Um, we're going to take a seat right now and I'm going to ask uh, Dr. Lynn Rogers uh, three questions from the PTZ uh, watchers out there. Okay. And by the way, these uh, questions were picked um, from many questions, uh, Dr. Lynn Rogers. Okay. And i got to tell you, Doctor, uh, the first one, are you ready for this one? <laughs> you call me Doctor every time. We got to get closer to the mic. Before I was too close, now I'm uh, too far away. Uh, you know how that goes. It's so big, ain't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I tell you. Um, first of all, uh, coming from Peg Taylor in Maine. Maine. Wow, is that a long ways away? Does everybody know that this is broadcast live throughout the world? You know that? Cool. It is cool. Um, first of all, in the daily updates you've mentioned, surface to mass ratio. Several times relating to the amounts of weight and heat loss during hibernation. Yep. Could you explain this concept for us non-scientists? Does this mean smaller bears lose more weight and heat? Yes. Yeah, because they have a higher percentage. I'm putting this, uh, my hand over this so that the wind doesn't go on it. Okay. And uh, uh, smaller bears uh, for their weight have uh, a much larger surface area. And there's a ratio for that, like for a ball, if you double the diameter of the ball, the surface area on the outside um, uh, gets four times bigger. But the, uh, but the mass inside, or the volume inside, gets eight times bigger. So bigger bears, have, uh, they can lose a lot less heat. So what you're saying is uh, I've got a lot of mass? Oh, you, oh yes, you have, a, you have a lot of mass. I do? Yeah, well, I don't mean to be. <laughs> let's not talk about me, though. Oh, no, let's not talk about me. Okay, I hope everybody out there understood that question. Uh, the second question is, are you ready for the second question? Yes. This is from Mary Martha McComas in Minnesota. I can say Minnesota. Right. Are you ready for this? I'm ready. Would you please discuss the female territory? What happens if there are two female yearlings and how the area is divided and why is that particular area chosen in the first place? Okay. Well, and that's a hard question. <laughs> because 
because it's hard to read the mind of a bear. <laughs> but on the other hand, and I'm not afraid to say I don't know, uh, but what I do know is that uh, they they just uh, the female yearlings would each pick a spot in the mother's territory, and even though they played as cubs and all that, they become uh, rivals uh, for territory after family breakup. So uh, they pick a pick an area. They'd stay apart for the most part, and uh, the mother respects the area that they chose if they chose a small, compact area. Uh, but I saw in one case where uh, one cub, one yearling, chose a little compact area, uh, maybe oh, a quarter or less of the mother's territory, and the other one just kept roaming the whole thing. And uh, actually, the one that had the compact area gained the most weight. Now, it might have been a, a higher quality area is why it stayed there. Okay. But, uh, but the mother avoided that area, even if it was the best area. So uh, it's, uh, yep. Uh, the males, I mean, they don't, they don't do that. I mean, they, they stay in the mother's territory for a while. Uh, depends on how developed they are, uh, because the slower they develop, the slower they are to leave home. Uh, in my old study area, without supplemental food, it was usually uh, they left home when they were two-year-olds, sometimes three, uh, rarely as, as yearlings. But in this uh, new study area where people are giving supplemental food, it's um, they most often leave as yearlings. Okay. Now, do you find that uh, they're territorial, that they fight uh, to keep their territory or protect their territory? Is that what you find with the females or the males? Um, the males don't have territories. Uh, they have a mating range that uh, is so big that it's indefensibly large, and it uh, it'll include seven to fifteen. Uh, female territories are parts of those territories, and uh, so they overlap with uh, a number of other males, and what they really defend is, because uh, they have to have a big area, because they not only are looking for food, but females. So um, uh, that's why we call it a mating range, and uh, they um, defend the female when they're with her, okay. if they can. If a bigger one comes along, then they just got to save their skin and <laughs> skedaddle. Get out of the way, huh? <laughs> yeah, get out of the way. Here's Big Daddy's coming. <laughs> All righty, uh, Mary, I hope that answered your question. Also, Peggy, uh, Peg, too. Um, you know, it just amazes me on some of the things that we think about with the bears. And uh, here's a question coming up that I'm going to really like uh, to have Lynn ans or answer, and that's from Mercy in northern Illinois. Thank you, Mercy, for this question. Here it reads, through your many years of research with black bears, what personally was the most surprising myth for slash misconception that you previously held that was dispelled by your studying black bears? Oh. Well, that's an easy one. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> because uh, the answer is just the basic thing that is the theme of the Bear Center, and it's what Lily fans know. They're just not the dangerous animal that we once thought. And what makes that really the most important finding of the whole study is that uh, people will not coexist with an animal they fear. So if we can tell people what bears are really like, they're more likely to coexist with them. Um, and um, it's just, uh, and, and different aspects of that keep revealing itself as the study goes on. At first we were surprised that mother black bears are not defensive of their cubs like grizzly bears are. Uh, there's only been a handful of attacks in defense of cubs. Uh, no killings that I know of, and uh, uh, just a tiny percentage of the uh, killings by black bears are even by mothers with cubs, and uh, but no indication that they were actually in defense of cubs. That could happen sometime, but uh, I don't know of any clear example. 
And then uh, I had a nice discussion on uh, on the telephone today with uh, a very good reporter, uh, just an in-depth kind of guy uh, from the New Jersey Star Ledger, uh, uh, calling about that killing that occurred there that relates to this question. Then uh, the killing of uh, uh, Darsh Patel, I think his name was, uh, and. Um, uh, they do now have uh, necropsy results, and, and it does appear that it was a predatory, unprovoked predatory killing that's just unexplainable. Uh, it's, it's, it's nothing to do with normal bear behavior like you would expect. Uh, think of a bell-shaped curve, and far out in one of the tails is one black bear out of a million that kills somebody. And uh, there's just no no explanation for it. We talked about all the things that could have been. You know, was it because the people ran from the bear? Uh, nope. Um, the bear was already following, according to the other couple that saw saw it. And uh, all, um, uh, in fact, most people tell me the most common story I hear is I saw a bear. I ran one way. The bear ran the other. And so, uh, <laughs> uh, but I suppose the guy. <laughs> so, but anyway, uh, um, oh, there's just the, the idea that if a bear loses its fear of people, so many bears get killed for that. Agencies worried about liability are always killing bears that uh, have lost some of their fear of people. But they don't realize those bears are no more likely to kill a bear, to kill a person than anybody else, in fact, less so, because uh, less likely to attack, because they're not, because uh, the, uh, the usual attacks, not these offensive predatory attacks, but uh, the uh, attacks that occasionally occur are defensive, uh, often triggered by a dog that's chased and runs back to the owner, and then the owner gets mixed up in it. But uh, just all the stuff we're learning just uh, says that black bears are not the dangerous animals we once thought. If they were, uh, we couldn't have been doing the kind of research we've been doing for decades and never uh, be attacked. It's amazing. Yeah. It is. I mean, as far as uh, publicity goes and stuff. The fear, the lack of knowledge uh, on which uh, management is based um, because... With no data, uh, the idea of dead bear is a dead bear replaces science. I mean that saying, and uh, uh, just the idea that uh, because the, the um, assumption behind the idea that if a bear loses its fear of people, it's going to attack, is that the bear would just like to attack people if it only did, and once they lose their fear, then they dare. Yeah. Truth is. When, when we get to really know a bear, uh, instead of attacking, it ignores us. They don't want us. They want to they wanna eat their preferred foods. Uh, uh, berries, nuts, uh, veg certain kinds of vegetation. Yeah. And uh, it's, um, so there's so much, so much, so many reasons for us to want to educate here at the Bear Center through these podcasts, through documentaries, through updates. Uh, that uh, that's that's our lives here. Uh, so many dedicated people here, and uh, we'll just keep doing it. Oh, thank you very much. You know, over the years uh, that I've known Lynn, I got to tell you, uh, his dream years and years ago to open the North American Bear Center uh, became a reality. And how many years, Lynn, since the Bear Center's been open now? The North American Bear Center. We opened May 5, 2007. I guess that's uh, seven years now. Seven, seven and a half years, and uh, we've educated probably a number of people, I would say, wouldn't you? Thank goodness. Yes, did you hear that? Thank goodness. <laughs> and, you know, our goal and our mission is to uh, absolutely get the word out about the misconception on bears, and I see on TV, and this is my question to you. I see on TV, you know, geez, so often, last night, uh, Mountain Men, I think the show was, and uh, everything they talked about on that show was how the black bears were going to attack the people and eat the people in the small town in Alaska. 
and it really frustrates you when you see that kind of stuff out there because you know it's so untrue. Um, can you tell me a little bit about that as far as uh, how you feel about those shows? Yeah, they're they're just uh, they're just bad for bears because they don't care about the truth. It's how do you make an exciting story, true or false? But it makes no no difference. How do you get viewers? How do you make bears seem dangerous enough that somebody will buy a magazine and and then uh, and even the jokes that you that you see, many of them are only funny about bears if you accept in your mind that they're dangerous. So uh, it's just so many subtle ways to have us brainwashed about bears and uh, and uh, and agencies and wildlife agencies that um, I know some of them have told me that uh, and they had a, a bear a snarling bear that's un unnatural uh, as a bear they would put in the, the county fair and stuff there in their booth they told me that they don't mind if there's dangerous reputation because uh, that helps people to support hunting more. And, uh, and, and I, I support hunting, but on the other hand, it's um, uh, I, I want it to be under truth, not false pretenses. So um, it's just it's, it's an uphill battle to get the word out, but uh, the, the message is growing. You know, right there alone, uh, just listening to uh, Lynn really opens our eyes up to what's going on, and we really thank all you uh, BBC, uh, watchers out there and everybody else that's watching, too. Um, I know that uh, Lynn wants to say a couple words about uh, some of the things that we have accomplished this fall uh, with the cleanup he had mentioned. So I'm going to let him go ahead and do that because, you know, he likes to talk, too. Hold on a minute. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you, I couldn't have noticed when I was walking to this chair that I looked at this clean water. You can see all the way to the bottom. It's like Silver Springs, Florida or something. <laughs> uh, right, warm, right here in Minnesota. <laughs> and uh, I, it, it's, the, the pond, I can't remember seeing it this clean. I mean, usually there's some erosion that goes into it, some silt and that clouds it. But right now it's crystal clear, yeah. and uh, and 15 or so volunteers turned out to make that many hands make light work, yes. and I just I just feel thank you in my heart all the time for so many things that Lily fans are doing. Yes, it is. It and again, it's uh, just been so exciting for me to have uh, Lynn here today. And you know, I'm going to ask him one more question. I want him to tell everybody out there, because I know he doesn't like to brag about himself. He doesn't like to have people bring things up that he does. You know, and he really doesn't. He, uh, he's always careful with that kind of stuff. But, you know, besides uh, caring so much for the bears and uh, bear study over the years, um, I'm going to let him just quickly, and I would really like you to quickly tell all the people out there some of the other wonderful things that you do. Photography. Um, let's talk about some of the other areas where you really stand out. I've learned that he's a phenomenal birder. Just a second here. Let me let him tell you. Oh, whoa. Man, should I be sitting here bragging? Please. I'm a great birder, and I'm a great photographer. And <laughs> you know, you know, you know. <laughs> somehow it doesn't sound right. It does. It does. It does. <laughs> but I, I was thinking as I was driving here, though, that one of my most pleasurable, some of my most pleasurable moments are when I happen to have a camera with me. I see something out the window. A camera. Yes. Yep. Surprise. And uh, I see something out the window. I snap the picture, and then you enlarge it on the screen to see how it came out and how good it feels when it's it's got the right light on it and it's sharp and and. Uh, so I, I uh, then I think, hey, good. Here's something for an update. <laughs> and uh, and uh, yep, there's uh, it's just it's it's fun. Nature is fun. And you know, I uh, I'm gonna he's he's he really is humble and and truly is because I happen to know that some of his photography is in the walls of this uh, North American Bear Center, and so, and just about all of it is just staggering. I mean, it really is when you do a wonderful job with your photography. And uh, in the future, we're going to look at promoting your photography. 
Your your photography is beautiful. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, the photography is here. Um, uh, the reason it's mostly mine is I'm the only one that, that uh, will give all proceeds to the bear center. <laughs> most most photographers, you know, they 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 want to make a profit somehow, of course. So, uh, but uh, yeah, it's um, it's it all supports the bear center. Such a humble man, I tell you, and uh, I am so so grateful that he came today and took the time out of his busy day, uh, because uh, just before he came here, he was working on the uh, oh the uh, the new ecology hall. Yes. Oh yeah. The Northwoods. Yeah, the Northwoods Ecology Hall. Right. Yeah, we uh, we only got a few months to get that done before we open in May, and and it won't be complete yet. Then uh, we'll have an opening. But it's going to go on. It's a work in progress. It's going to go on getting better and better over the years. Uh, we want to bring in top scientists to do new exhibits, uh, stuff that's uh, you know not my area of specialty, but about ecology. Okay. And so uh, it, that's going to be a top attraction in the area, I believe. Uh, very strong education thing to help people understand and appreciate this area. Uh, thank you for doing that, and I'll tell you, as his dream comes together, uh, things are moving along, and I'm really excited about it, and I'm really excited to be part of it. Um, I just want to take just a minute again to thank the uh, folks that put all those good questions down uh, for uh, Lynn to answer, and I also want to say that uh, the Northwoods uh, Ecology Wing, uh, in November uh, 13th, I say a lot of ahs, don't I? November 13th is the big day. It's the big Give Men Day. And uh, Give to the Max is so important to uh, the Ecology Wing. And all those donations, I believe, uh, to that are going to go toward the Northwoods Ecology Wing. Am I correct? Uh, the new addition, yeah, the whole Burning Center and the Ecology Hall. and Yes, and this year uh, there's something different. Um, uh, that is that if people want to give money that would encourage other donations by making it matching money, a uh, money to be matched, uh, that has to be all in by October 31st. And so uh, if anybody is thinking of giving a larger donation that could be used as a significant match, uh, you know, money to match, uh, uh, get, on, get on your computer and uh, email J M Varnish. That's J M Varnish with an I at oh, oh, Yahoo.com. I don't know. We don't have that. I gotta say, I don't oh, know. No. What is it? J M Varnish at bear.org. At bear.org. Yep. 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 <laughs> Good. Oh, oh, right thank now. you. <laughs> 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 Again, I, I just want to thank, thank uh, my friend Lynn and our, our founder of this place, and I want to say thanks so much for coming today. Thank you all out there in uh, PTZ land, uh, and I think Lynn wants to say a goodbye. Hold on a minute. Well, when you were saying thank you to me, I was thank you, thank, thank you to you and the staff uh, that is so dedicated uh, and working so hard, and all the volunteers, uh, Lily fans, uh, takes us far beyond, edu you know, educating far beyond what would otherwise be possible. So, thank you. Thank you all, and have a great day today. Uh, and thanks for putting up with this uh, wind. We have winds, I think, around 30 miles an hour plus. It's uh, really windy out here, so if we're making noise again, that's why. Thanks again, and have a great day out there. And as Lynn says, thank you for all you do. Thank you. Bye now. What? And I say, it's me, Bear. All righty. Have a great day. <laughs>